with me, and I won't be before you long. I'm going to read to you a uh, scripture out of Isaiah, the 10th chapter. Today I want to talk to you about the anointing of God, and I'm going to weave it into understand how to use the anointing to create an atmosphere that the Holy Spirit can dwell in. And then I'm going to close by telling you how to anoint your homes. Amen. So Isaiah 10. Very common passage of scripture with verse 27. When you have it say amen. All right. Word of the Lord read. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. Let's go to Ephesians the second chapter. Ephesians the second chapter I want to read in verse 2 amen Ephesians 2 and 2 listen to this uh, children of God wherein in time past now this was when you wasn't saved all right whether you knew it or not ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Is that all right? Now people, I want you to, 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 to think about something. I'm going to ask you a question here. Have you ever walked into a room and there was a lot of people in the room but without anyone saying anything to you you sensed something was wrong uh, for some reason uh, it felt heavy in there uh, it felt like uh, 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 the aroma there was uh, somebody was depressed or somebody was sad or there was a spirit of heaven that was in there. Have you ever went into a place and, and there was just something that didn't agree with your spirit? Amen. Well, people, this is what the Lord is talking about when he shared with you and I, Deacon Thompson, that uh, there is a prince with a small P, and that's Satan. And he is the prince over the power of the air. Yeah. Now there's a lot of names for Satan in the Bible, but I want you to concentrate on one in particular this morning, and that is by Beelzebub. It means Lord of the flies. And what it means is, people, Satan, just like a fly, wants to distract you to cause you to be in a realm where the atmosphere around you is frustrated, is downtrodden, is filled with negativity. And the reason he want to do this, people, is because he knows that if you and I allow an environment to suffer around us that's not preminated by joy, the Holy Spirit cannot come in to do his marvelous works. So every believer, Deacon Hassan, has to know they have the power to change their environment. I feel good now. In other words, people, every believer has to know attitude is everything. <laughs> People, if I am sad, it's hard for me to believe I got the victory. If I am depressed, it's hard for me to believe, not only believe people, have you ever noticed 
when you are sad and when you are depressed, if you really think about it, you don't even think about God during those times. But God is saying, we have to master this thing. We have to turn this thing around. Now, now listen to this, y'all. There's a difference between weather and climate. Climate determines what the weather's going to be, Deacon Albert Smith. Now, in other words, uh, the climate will determine if it's going to be hot, Cold, cool, or rain, climate does that. So if you want to change the weather, you somehow have to learn how to change the climate. But I'm not talking about a natural climate. I'm talking about a spiritual climate. I'm talking about understanding that, that Satan want to steal my joy, steal my peace, that I can't lift my hand and give God praise, but I got to make up in my mind I'm going to change this thing around because I need the joy of the Lord to be working for me. So I know I have a ministry to prepare myself to come praise God. When, when, when I wake up on Sunday morning, come on, pray with me here. Uh, uh, when, I, I, when I get up, I get down. <laughs> I get up to get down. And when I get down, I start thanking God. When I go in the shower, I start praying, praying and singing because I like to have church at home before I have church with you. Because when I come to church, I got to be ready to go. I got to be on fire. When I'm in my car, I got to sing myself happy if I'm down. I got to change my environment. Yes, somebody just died, but I'm going to have to give him some praise. Yes, I'm hurting in my back, but I got to give him some praise because when we come here, we don't come to church because that's what we do on Sunday morning. I come to church for a corporate opportunity to encounter God with you. You may not believe that, but I'm telling you, when I come to church, Deacon Gerald, I expect the Shekinah glory of God to rest over the congregation. When I come to church, I don't come to hear the choir entertain. I come to hear them minister through song that they can sing that foul spirit. I, will, I come expecting the choir to be just like David was when an evil spirit came over King Saul. David found that there was an anointing in the music. And the Bible says when he began to play his instrument, that spirit would come up off of Saul. Sometimes you got to get yourself together, listen good to what God's singing, and let that spirit of heaviness. I got to be ready because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I bet you I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, Harry, go into the house of the Lord. Because there's healing in the house of the Lord. There's deliverance in the house of the Lord. There's victory in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's a breakthrough in the house of the Lord. I got to get around saved folks that create an environment that the impossible can happen. Minister Michelle, God will respond to any people who know daddy is and daddy is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But you got to have an expectation. You got to rely on God. Now listen now, how many of y'all feel good in your spirit? How many of y'all been going through something? 
How many got some hell hounds on your trail? How many of y'all been sick in your body? Your family members been sick. How many of y'all have the adversary come against telling lies on you, trying to get people to tag you down? Raise your hand if the devil been at you. Let me tell you what you ought to do. Let the enemy Let the enemy, let him come on. I don't have no bat, I don't have a gun, I don't have a knife because my weapons are not cardinal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Come on, 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 that can praise and worship God. I believe I can praise myself out of anything. I believe I can sing. You got to believe it though. Some of y'all have been going through some real big trials. You are not going through big trials because you did wrong. You are going through these trials because you've been growing in your faith and God is using you to show some people what a person can be when they believe in God. Come on, get a Lord a hand praise. I feel the power of God now. Help me in your Holy Ghost. Help me in the Holy Ghost. Come on, give him some praise, y'all. God, give him the Holy Spirit. Choir, when you come up to sing, you can determine the start the preacher gonna get. If you are singing, and it's dry and not anointed, when the preacher get up here, he's got to work extra hard. But boy, when you have sung to the glory of God, when the preacher steps up in the pulpit, he can lift his hand and go on to help. Brother Bute, because of the anointing, we got the victory. Let me talk to you about the anointing for how many of y'all know you anointed? Now, who the anointing? Somebody say that with me. Anointing. See, we don't talk about the anointing enough. Sometimes we're scared to talk about the anointing because we think it's something we don't have. But my Bible tells me that everybody has the anointing. But let me tell you something. If I was you, I wouldn't do nothing for God unless he has anointed me to do it. And I mean, if I'm cleaning the church, God needs to anoint me to do it. If I drive a bus, I need to be anointed to do it. Now, now what is anointing? It means Cheryl's or charisma, but it is God's ability that comes over a person he's called to give them the supernatural ability to do things they can't do. I don't know what you've seen or what you believe. I have seen the anointing of God raise people, sick people up, I've seen it cast off demons. I don't know what you believe, but I'm telling you, the anointing is to the Christian. You better hold on and catch this one. What a telephone booth. What's a Clark Kent? Is anybody gonna pray for me? Do you remember when Clark Kent went into? Do y'all remember when he went into? The phone booth, 
He didn't come out the same way. When you go into the anointing, when you come back out, you got hands that can lay hand on the sick and cause them to recover. You... Hold on, let me. The anointing, the carols, the charisma of God. Ooh, the anointing. Fire stop in your bones. The anointing that'll show you what your children doing even though you ain't present. The anointing. Anointing. It can be sprinkled on a person, Dick and Mike. It can be poured on them, or it can be rubbed on them. I, like all three of them, the Lord I prefer to rub because with the rub. I have more time where he's touching me. Do anybody understand what I'm saying? In other words, people, God wants to rub this anointing into you that you can feel the sensation of the power of the Holy Ghost. When a person is anointed, it's easier for them to wait on their blessing. Some of y'all, God's going to bless you real good. The only problem is he's not going to do it right now. But you got to keep your faith up until it comes. Call on the anointing to keep you thick and strong. God in Old Testament anointed kings priests and prophets to give him, to give them his ability. In the New Testament, every one of y'all, as I said, have an anointing. Jesus is the Messiah. He's God, anointed king. When Jesus was baptized, and he came up out of the water. A dove ascended on his shoulder. And the word of the Lord came to John Baptist and it said, the one in whom you see the dove sit on and remain, that's the one that I baptized with water and I baptized him with fire. God is saying some of us got the water but I want to give you the fire. Yes. See, 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 the fire is for battle. Now listen. The anointing. It gives you God divine approval. Horston, if God approves of you, who else approval do you need? It gives you God divine authority. And God divine power and people the anointing flows who help me Lord if you sit next to an anointed person right now if that person would raise up their spiritual temperature the fire on them would ooze over to where you're at when you have the anointing, you can set your brother and sister on fire even when they cold. God says, anoint. Now over in Isaiah, and I'm getting ready to call the 10th chapter, 27 verse, he says in that day, the burden is going to be taken off of your shoulders. <laughs> and the yoke is going to be destroyed and took off of your neck. And guess what's going to do this work? He says, because of the anointing, the burden and the yoke is going to be restored. Let me say that again. It's going to be removed 
and it's going to be destroyed. What I came to tell you this morning, God say, we're getting the first function of the anointing, but we're not getting the second. Can I preach in here? On the day of atonement, the highest Jewish holiday, one time during the year, Deacon King, that the high priest of God could go into the Holy of Holies. I got to say it one more time. One time a year, the high priest would take the blood of a sacrifice and go through the outer court and go in the middle court, the holy place. And then Deacon Wimple, he had a censer in his hand, looked like a teapot about this big. And he had to take a charcoal off of the altar and he put it in to teach them. Now God is sitting on the mercy seat and no man can see God and still live. So the high priest had to take that censer with smoke and swing it 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 till he made so much smoke he could put the blood on the mercy seat without God seeing it. But just in case he failed, because if it wasn't enough smoke, he was gonna die. They would put a rope around his right foot and put some plum granite bells by his foot. I've already told you the only person that can go in there is the high priest. So if the high priest did it wrong, he died. And then they would take that rope. Now how did they know he had died? The bells stopped ringing. As long as he was moving, the bells was ringing. When he was dead, it means, who gonna go get him? Nobody else can go in there. But that's why we put a rope around it. We don't have to pull him out because you can't just go before the presence of Children of God, we got to be prayed up, fast up, and be ready to enter the presence of God. Now listen, the anointing. It's gonna do two things. Remove the burden and destroy the yoke. Deacon McClendon, the Day of Atonement, after they finished the ritual, they took two goats. One goat was for the sin of the people. The priest laid his hands on him, transferring the people's sin to the goat. When the sin was on the goat, the high priest Killed him. That means function number one. The cause of sin is dead. But then there was a second goat. He represented the consequences of the sin. So the people took him out of the assembly are y'all with me? And they didn't leave him out there until tomorrow. They took him to a cliff and they kicked him off. That he broke his neck and he broke his legs. Why? So that he wouldn't return. How many of y'all ever had a dog? And you tried to get rid of him. I know none of you good people did it, but you probably seen it on TV. Do you know you can take your dog way out to the country and let him go? And when you go back down the street and turn the corner, you can't see him. But about three hours later, you hear old Fluffy licking and hollering. God is saying, when we deal with the burden, 
you need to lock your back door so it don't come back. Let me go here with you. How many of y'all folk? How many of y'all women been in relationship with somebody who didn't treat you right? But for some reason, they had the gift of the gab. And you can listen to what they say and take them back. Am I preaching in here? Sisters, keep your arm down, hand down, because I know you're too smart and too strong for anybody to get over on you. I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to somebody you know. But how many of y'all know if you don't lock the back door, that same booger bear coming back, he done took a bath, he done washed his hair, he done shaved, but he's still the same on the inside. God is saying, God is saying, I want you to destroy this thing. Now listen, the first part is the burden. Listen to this. Isaiah 53, Dr. Jack, he was wounded for your transgression. And he was bruised for your iniquity. When the Bible said, and let me throw this on in here because I like it. And by his stripes, you are already healed. By his stripes, you are already healed. But he said that he was wounded for your transgression. People transgressions are a sin that shows on the outside. When he says he was wounded, a wound is a break of the skin that causes blood to flow out. So Jesus was wounded for everything that can happen on the outside to you. But that's only one part of it. Deacon Gwen, he was dead, bruised for your iniquity. Bruised, meaning he took a blow in his body that didn't break the skin but the blood locked in place causing a bruise. A bruise is when you bleed on the inside. Now what's the effect of that? Remember I said a burden and a yoke. Here we go, sisters. 